The ZWO ASI Air Plus is finally here. Have you ever thought about swapping the laptop computer you use for astrophotography and all the software installed on it for one of these things? I did for a while and then I came crawling back to my computer in a bucket routine soon after. This one's different though. This is the third installment in the ASI Air legacy. And this one aims to correct all of the shortcomings the previous versions had that had old school guys like me going back to their old ways. That's right, the astrophotography accessory that changed the game is more capable and refined than ever. ZWO sent me a demo copy of their latest flagship wireless imaging controller, and here I am reluctantly willing to modify my beloved setup and capture rituals just to show you guys what this thing is about. I wasn't compensated in any way for a review and I have to send it back unless I wanna buy this thing off them outright. You've probably already heard of the ZWO ASI Air, at least one of the versions. It's essentially a Raspberry Pi mini PC with all the tools needed for a complete imaging session with your ZWO camera. People that own these really swear by them and I think it's because they solved a few problems that beginner to intermediate level astrophotographers were having. It streamlines the entire start to finish image capture process. And once everything's set up, you can control everything from your phone or tablet without touching the telescope or even going outside. It's remarkable to see how far this hobby has come in the last 10 years. No matter what the OGs, myself included, think of devices like this, it really is an incredible innovation. I truly think it's partially responsible for ushering in a new wave of astrophotographers by reducing a lot of the friction involved with the setup and image capture process. And that's one hell of an accomplishment. So if the ASI Air is so great, how come I haven't been using one for the last two years? Well, to be honest, it fixes a lot of problems that I just don't have. I love my old school setup routine, manual polar alignment, my big clunky laptop. I'm just so used to my old routine, I never felt the need to change, even though yes, the ASI Air does a lot of these things for you and a lot better. But I also realized that the way I do things is not for everyone. I'm using the ZWO ASI Air Plus to capture astro photos tonight using the ASI 2400 MC Pro color camera. This is a full frame, one shot color dedicated astronomy camera. Could this be the RA killer? The camera is attached to a Radian 61 APO triplet refractor and the laptop is gone. Everything rides together on the telescope mount. The ASI Air Plus comes with a handy mounting option, but I went with the tried and true Velcro strips. The setup you see here is really a stripped down version of what the ASI Air Plus was designed to do. It can do everything from controlling your telescope mount using control via Sky Safari and Plate Solve, to auto-focusing filter wheel changes. I'm just gonna be using the ASI Air Plus tonight with the image capture control and the built-in auto-guiding feature. The plate solving features and the mount control and especially the polar alignment tool are huge fan favorites. So I haven't tested the mount control yet or the cool tonight's best object selection, but I do know someone that has. I'm a previous contributor to the free and open source astrophotography software called Nina. And it really hurts me to say, but I was quite impressed by how simple and well-rounded a package the ASI Air provides. And what really impressed me the most is how it guides or even forces beginners into a simple workflow to make them successful in astrophotography. You have a preview pane where you can take exposures to look at your target, but you also have a search bar that's featuring prominently and an auto-guiding window as well. So you know what you need to do. Click on the search bar, then you click on your object and that will slew to that object. But more than that, the system takes the initiative and after slewing, it will automatically plate solve and center the object for you to really remove a lot of the frustration and difficulties that have plagued beginners to the hobby for so long. Now, if only it supported cameras other than DSLRs and ZW cameras, it would be perfect. I've downloaded the ASI Air Plus app on my smartphone. I use a Samsung 
Samsung Galaxy S21. Believe it or not, on a phone screen, the way the user interface was designed, it's actually very practical to use. You can pretty well see everything at a glance, including your image exposures as they come through, the histogram, your auto guiding, and you can make changes on the fly. It works really, really well. Because it's such a simplified version of an image capture software that has to fit in your hand, all of the important information is only a few taps away and not buried under a long list of menus and options. The Plus has corrected the biggest issue with the original ASI Air, which was the Wi-Fi range. It's listed at about 65 feet of range now, which is more than enough for me to get everything set up and then go inside the house and keep tabs on everything that's running out here. ZWO also says the system is a lot more stable now with faster write speeds, which is important as these sensors keep getting bigger and bigger and the data coming through is more demanding on the system. I use a portable 3.0 USB thumb drive plugged into the ASI Air Plus to record my data. On the test images I did of dark frames, I pulled them off, no problem, there they were, brought them onto my computer. Here's my first image of the Lobster Claw Nebula, Bubble Nebula, and the surrounding area as taken through the ASI Air Plus. So pretty cool to see the images come through like this. It actually creates a JPEG for you to look at, uh, not just the FITS file, the raw format that you'll be editing later, but it creates these preview files, which are really handy. And one of my favorite features at this stage while it's running, you can go to Tools and Annotate. And look at that, just confirmation of what you're actually looking at there. Um, pretty cool to just be able to pick everything up like that so quickly. My auto guiding is of course running in the background. I can check in on things here. I can expand it. Uh, there's my graph there. It's doing a great job. So the auto guiding system, this isn't PhD2 guiding. I'm sure it uses a very similar way of doing things, but this is its own guiding system via the ASI Air Plus. So we can just close that down. And so I've got my automated plan here. I am taking 300 second exposures, uh, bin one by one, and I'm gonna take 60 of them. Uh, these are my light frames, I can label it the lobster claw, and then I can go into the file management system and take a look at everything I've captured so far. Uh, see the space left on my USB drive there, lots of space. So if you click on the picture icon here, I can go to my folders, the auto run, this is where I keep my sequences of images, light frames, and lobster claw new. Here's my first fit frame here. And it's gonna load it to preview the image and I can do things like the annotate like I showed you before, but pretty cool to access all your files like that safe and sound. If you already own an ASI Air or ASI Air Pro and are happy with it and any workarounds you've had to come up with to get over that Wi-Fi range issue, I don't see an immediate need to upgrade to the Plus right away. But if you're a laptop guy like me who's been patiently sitting back, watching and waiting for this product to improve, now might be a good time to dive in. The Wi-Fi thing was annoying in the original, but really it was the instability and the bugginess that really scared me away on the original ASI Air. I need to make sure that those pictures are being captured safely every time, no messing around. So I'll continue testing the ASI Air Plus here in the backyard, and if I really start enjoying and trusting this thing, I may just have to retire one of my faithful old Astro laptops for good. I hope this was useful to you, and as always, until next time, clear skies.